Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again. So as mentioned, uh, you are very lucky um, because we have our official RTC, our release to customer of the 2022 release just uh, two days ago at the 12th of uh, October. So um, it's really brand new what you will see today, what we have available to our customers. Um, we prepared a small agenda. So the agenda looks like this. I would like, before I dig into the details of the EWM, I would like again to expand a little bit the view on um, the overall digital logistics, what our strategy and an overview, what we have available in our portfolio. Before I then go into the details on the um, on and highlights of the 2022 release. So we do it on a real high level yeah, due to the limit of time. We can talk for ages on the new things. We really developed a lot. And then at the end, we would like to have a, a little roadmap out and outlook what we plan for in the near future. I will do that together with my colleague, Ama Kuma. So yeah. As mentioned, I would like to give you a little bit an overview because I think it's always good to have uh, yeah, a little bit eyes open what is happening left and right. I mean, uh, if we talk about warehousing logistics, then you see it's just a part of our digital logistics portfolio, which we have available. For sure, we have our production capabilities, fulfillment, yard logistics, and especially transportation management, where we work together. And this is, let's say, our core products, and all that framed by the new network operations like freight networks, inter-enterprise inter networks, and visibility networks. And I mean, all about that is uh, that we can do a SKU level tracking and have visibility along the whole supply chain. I think we all know this visibility is uh, even more important in these days with a lot of interruption due to different reasons like COVID and others around the globe. And all that framed by the intelligence insights, which is mainly focusing, let's say, on SAP analytics cloud capabilities so that you <clears throat> have a good view on all the different products end to end and can do some analysis based on that. So when we talk about digital logistics, we talk about many different products. Um, we have our advanced availability to promise. I think we always, or we sometimes forget to speak a little bit about the core logistics. I even get questions like, is inventory management still part when we do EWM? For sure. I mean, it's the base layer. We have the inventory management below. We know the sum of the products and what is coming in and out. And we have to plan as mentioned with the uh, advanced uh, available to promise. Then we have our core logistics uh, features with or our EWM and yard logistic features, what I would like to focus in the next uh, couple of minutes on it. We have our transportation management, which is really close to EWM due to this advanced shipping and receiving you will see on the next slides as well. And we have our business networks, which is then basically building this bridge to this um, network capabilities. So as mentioned, I will focus today on EWM. By that, <clears throat> we, we can proudly say that EWM is a very successful product. We have more than 2,500 customers around the globe, more than 65 countries in more than 24 industries. So EWM is a cross-industry product. And I think what uh, are new KPIs or what is a new KPI, what uh, many customers are interested in is that we have already more than 125 embedded EWM installations. This number is constantly growing. I mean, with the S4 um, adoption is growing. Most of the time we even get the growth in this embedded EWM. We have a lot of customers already live. And as we have our strategic directions that EWM is our predecessor of the warehouse management solution in the future. Even automation is getting more and more important. Um, we have it under the MFS uh, capabilities. We have more than 300 automated warehouses running um, with EWM. And then just to give some interesting facts, we have 
really quick implementations like for Bechtle within five months. We have template approaches with 20 or even more warehouses uh, at Maple Leafs, for example. We got very positive feedback from, for example, Kaiser, where they say they had a 40 percent increase of number of picks per day by utilizing EWM. We have Liverpool, which is high volume and scalability. They have more than 750,000 delivery items per day. I think even that number might be grown in the meanwhile. And you see just a bunch of different uh, customers um, as an example, but there's a huge number more as you can expect with 2,500 customers live in EWM. So it's a very stable solution. And I mean, what drives our customers these days is most of the time the question about, should we go to S4? We have to migrate. What are the benefits? What do we gain out of it? And I mean, with that slide, I just pick some examples. We, when we talk about EWM 9.5 on the NetWeaver platform, we usually talk about, uh, or we basically talk about a solution which is five years old. And trust me, we delivered a lot of new features and functionalities in the last five years, which you would benefit if you go to the S4 HANA stack in EWM for, uh, in special. For some examples here are the distribution equipment, which is basically the foundation for our route train capabilities. We invested a lot in usability in this user-centric uh, topics uh, with new Fiori applications like the packing, the warehouse task confirmation apps, we, uh, we did a lot in terms of, uh, yeah, mainly integration. I mean, it, it sounds a little bit old fashioned, right? But still, this is one of the key strengths of SAP, the integration yeah, to the outer world so that we have uh, integration to pre PP with production supply, with chis supply, with Kanban um, capabilities, with integration to MES systems, either from SAP with the DMC or with open APIs to even third party MES systems. We have a huge, in, uh, we always deliver new features and functionalities when it comes to QM. We have the advanced shipping and receiving uh, from the 2020 feature pack one release onwards. We have this advanced shipping receiving, which is our new integration between TM and EWM. We even did something, for example, in the plant maintenance area. I mean, customers are used to, um, yeah, when we come closer to production lines, they usually stage their components, but at the same go, they have their machines, they have to be maintained, and uh, all these maintenance parts needs to be stored somewhere, yeah, where in the warehouse, and they would like or expect the same way of staging these uh, spare parts towards the production mach machines as they do it for the normal components for their production process. Another example is the Unified Package Builder. If you don't know what it is about, you will see on the coming, upcoming slides, um, which we already introduced, and we enable more and more um, transactions to utilize this Unified Package Builder. By that, I would like to jump into um, yeah, what's coming new in 2022. Don't be shocked by that slide. It's just, uh, it's just about to give you an overview about the different buckets we invested into. So we have the integration piece, we have the production, we have industry specifics, we have continuous improvements, we have innovations, and we even invest in usability. Let's go one by one. As mentioned, if you don't know about the Unified Package Builder, what is it about? I think the right-hand picture here um, shows it uh, quite well. We have um, the Unified Package Builder is nothing else than an interface, right? It's an interface, it's a generic layer. Why? Uh, yeah, when we think about the S4 and thought about the different applications we have in there, we have our core logistics. As I have mentioned, we usually have our packaging instruction with own packaging um, algorithms. We have uh, our transportation management, which has the so-called uh, package builder with the package builder master data. And in EWM, you might know that we have the packaging specification, which has an own algorithm. So yeah, some customers um, truly ask, like, why the hell do I need three packaging master data? Yeah, I would simply do simple packing. I think there's a proper reason for all the different capabilities for all the different algorithms. I mean, there is certain specific needs in EWM for specific customers to do some packing. There's specific needs in transportation management. I mean, to, to plan a truck, this is something different from to plan a pallet in certain cases. But on the other hand, if a customer says like, 
we are a, a component manufacturer. We produce, I don't know, um, certain materials and it's always packed like thousand pieces on a pallet, full stop. There's no additional requirement, yeah? So why the hell do we need to maintain three different master data? And that was the intention to say like, in that case where you have very simple uh, packaging instructions and uh, you can use this packaging instruction even in the warehouse and you could even use it to plan your pallets on a truck, as mentioned in this example with thousand pieces on a pallet. And that is exactly what we, uh, why we invented this uh, API, this package, unified package builder, so that you have a switch somewhere and you need to enable the applications, as I have mentioned, so that out of the different applications, you can utilize, for example, a packaging instruction from the core logistics. And that we already started uh, in the past and we enabled in this 2022 release, this unified package, uh, package builder during the RF receiving from the supplier. And we even enabled it in the classical pack transaction, the SEM pack, and even in a change inbound delivery transaction. Another functionality is the so-called pre-packaged shipping from production. You might know it from the, from the transaction code VL10 HU, package-based shipping from production. What is it? Usually you have big contracts with your customers um, to produce breaks, for example, and they expect to get it in certain boxes like blue boxes, 10 in each box, because that's how they could consume it at their production facilities on their end. Then they call it off and they expect to get these blue boxes with 10 pieces in it. But you produce maybe for a different company as well breaks. And there you expect to get six pieces or, or four pieces in a blue box or, or a red box or some, somehow different. And that is exactly what we enable here with the synchronous goods receipt posting against this manufacturing order we store. And you see that we even made use out of this packaging, unified package builder as well in that case that you can use the package instruction or packaging specification. And then we store the handling unit, we avoid that this got split and if you then get the call off with the outbound delivery, we pick against this specific customer needs with their blue or red boxes. QM integration. You might have heard about the synchronous goods movements, uh, which you will hear later on as well. This is a big improvement if you um, look into an embedded installation to simplify the processes. So, but we made it a little bit too simple because the customers who adapted on that set yeah, it's fine to get the simple goods receipt posting here with the direct warehouse task creation, but still we need a QM integration here. We need our inspection log. So these products needs to be inspected. That's what we deliver with 2022. QM certificates during goods receipt. It's not about <clears throat> um, um, registering, let's say the QM certificate. This is still happening in the QM module. It's more about the indication that for a certain product in that inbound delivery, you have to check if a certificate exists to hand it basically forward to the QM department who is then keying in the details on this QM certificates. Even that we deliver with 2022 release. Advanced shipping and receiving, you have heard about it. We started this journey already. We started with the so-called warehouse uh, execution driven capability. Um, so it means back in the days, you first started with the warehouse execution. So you pick, you pack, you stage the products, and then you inform the TM ready for shipping. And then they start their planning process. This was uh, very special. And we enabled additional scenarios now like the customer returns so that we could even handle customer returns with the advanced shipping and receiving interface. And even more important is the so-called order-based planning. So based on a sales order, you can start your planning process and run then later on your warehouse execution. So this is how many other customers do it, uh, that they start planning first <clears throat> and will then continue their warehouse execution. Um, in the next releases, we plan even for a delivery-based planning. For feature priority, we even had to um, yeah, take into consideration the customer stock, so-called stock type B. What is it about? Mainly driven by these huge airplane companies. You see here these little pictograms. So usually you have your big turbines get delivered. You do need to do some maintenance work on it. So you get the components even delivered maybe by the by this uh, company who, who gives you the contract to do the maintenance work. Then you start your maintenance. 
And it's not your product, it's the customer stock. It not belongs to you, so it's the customer stock you are having in hand. This is about this functionality. One of my favorite topics is about the production integration. We always heard about this industry 4.0 or as we call it in SAP 4.0 now because we already have it on hand, the needed capabilities so that we have this industry 4.0 uh, up and running. And what customers aim for is this matrix or modular production. And if we talk about this matrix or modular production, you will have late changes triggered by MES or the so-called RIO, resource orchestration. What is it about? We plan in PP based on a production order. You have a production a work center linked to that work center. You have a production supply area. You get the stage uh, production material request for this specific production supply order. We already introduced with one of the last releases the MES driven staging scenario so that the MES system could trigger the staging process. By that, um, we now had the need that they decide for whatever reasons to run in parallel. Yeah, you have these production islands. You would like to utilize two production islands um, to do the same exercise to just increase the throughput on, on a certain process step due to a huge variety you could have for your end products. And therefore, they needed the capability to even call it off, not only for the production supply area one in this example, so even for the production supply area two. <clears throat> and we enabled not only the staging towards this new production supply area, what is even more important is that we are capable now to consume from this production supply area. Another thing um, which is very interesting is the so-called work in progress. Work in progress is something where you don't have a dedicated material number. So you have a raw material maybe and uh, or different components, and then you have a finished material and you need to do certain steps in between, but you never sell it, even not as a spare part, you don't sell it as a finished product or whatever, but for a huge um, a machinery industry, for example, they would need to triple their material master if they would like to process this logistics wise. And to avoid that, we really get, I think it's a novum, we got the first time a new material type. The material type is called EWM only. And with that, we are capable now to receive from the MES system, it's open, uh, open OData APIs, which we utilize for that, to receive work in progress handling. So we receive certain um, stock into the warehouse, we can store it, and uh, the MES system could call it off again, and it can be consumed at the end. So it's a uh, it's really interesting feature. It has open APIs as mentioned. So I'm sure one or the other might find some creative ways to utilize the whip stock. I always do the, the kidding that uh, we, I thought about my past in, in consulting. Uh, this is the first time you can store the winter tires of the warehouse manager now in a proper way by utilizing, for example, this whip stock because it's not communicated back to the EP system. So this stock only exists in EWM. Another thing in the area of um, production integration for more the process industries where you have dedicated production or process orders which are interconnected. We already know that with the finishing of the first step, it should be directly forwarded to the second PSA. And this you now, now can use the control cycle and indicate the target PSA in there. So you don't have the need to store it in the warehouse before and directly move it to the receiving target PSA. This is possible only in an embedded scenario with the synchronous goods movement. By that, I would like to hand over to Ama. Yeah, so good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever in the world you all are. So thank you, Florian, for uh, the presentation so far. So I would now concentrate on a few industry-specific enhancements which we have delivered with the 2022 release. Uh, even though what you see on this slide is mentions retail and distribution operations, but wave management is a cross industry uh, feature. So which is used in automotive as well as retail industry. So it can be for any industries. We, we had a very restrictive two-step uh, picking process with, uh, with regards to the existing wave management. You must have all noticed in your uh, implementation projects where the two-step picking was activated at the material level or at the warehouse level. And there have been uh, repeated requests, at least from the retail industry, that this is very restrictive. We need to have more intelligent two-step picking based on 
probably the quantities to be picked. So if it is a full palette, then why should it go by a two-step area, for example? So and and therefore we now uh, have uh, incorporated all the requirements which came in primarily as a retail connect uh, topic to enhance the the usage of two-step picking in a way that it is more flexible. We provided a body to influence the two-step picking. We look at the quantities. It's more quantity-based two-step picking. And we can also, with this enhancement, we also improve the performance of WAVE in a way that we can also simulate the withdrawal uh, step as well as use a parallelization process for both withdrawal as well as the allocation uh, process of two-step picking. This is the first, first thing what you see on this uh, slide. The second part, the bottom half is called stock segmentation. It's, it's, this is a functionality which was existing in S4 HANA where you can segment uh, a, a stock by certain attributes like quality, country of origin, which is similar to batch characteristics. But the, the idea of using stock segmentation is that it is linked also to a requirement segment. So that means you can seg segregate a requirement, whether it's a sales order coming from a country A, B, C, or a sales order which requires qual quality products A, B, C, or quality Q1, Q2. So, and then there, are, uh, this, there is a functionality in the backend ERP where you can map the requirement segment to a stock segment, regardless of whether you use batch characteristics at all. So it's it's an attribute of a batch and not a characteristic. And all this was existing in the S4 HANA backend. And there was increasing demand that EWM should support stock segmentation in stock in the warehouse, as well as respect the requirement segment, which is coming in the form of outbound deliveries as an additional attribute during picking uh, the, the right stock. So. We have now enabled a lot of EWM processes to support stock segmentation, including inbound. We can receive a new stock, a new batch with a segmented stock. Outbound, including uh, checking the requirement segment and mapping it to the right stock segment. Returns management and uh, synchronous goods movements in the embedded EWM naturally. So there's more to come. So we are also planning in the upcoming releases, uh, other, other functionalities which should be supporting stock segmentation. Next slide, Gloria. So in addition to uh, the retail, so there was uh, some roundups with regards to the auto uh, automotive industry with regards to Kanban. So where, where the Kanban is linked to an inbound uh, delivery. So the JIT calls are uh, linked to ASNs and inbound delivery items. So now we can we support this also in EWM. We can handle ASNs with several JIT calls per delivery items. We can get, we get the JIT references in the inbound delivery in EWM. We can use the Kanban JIT call data for label printing. We can change quantities during rece uh, goods receipt posting, and we can trigger also the update of the Kanban container back to the Kanban board. So that's one thing with regards to Kanban and JIT calls. And the, uh, another requirement from the automotive industry was to support uh, something called the GTL numbers, so GTL labels, so which are long labels, and uh, uh, which are 22 digits. Uh, uh, handling unit identification. So now we can scan in all EWM RF transactions, packing transactions, including the Fiori pack outbound delivery, pack pack, pick by cart, and uh, ad hoc uh, HU and warehouse task confirmation. So you can scan the GTL numbers. Next slide, Florian, please. So another industry specific uh, enhancement which comes with the 2022 release is with regards to the oil and gas industry where uh, which we, which the term is used as field logistics cross stocking. So uh, this is a cross stocking where you have uh, a maintenance order and the maintenance order creates uh, uh, a procurement for the required components. And when the components are uh, all, uh, all there in the warehouse, we can then send the components to the 
a remote plant or the, or the oil rig. So this is used in the oil and gas industries, usually so where the base warehouse should collect all the inform all the components until they have arrived before se sending it into to the rig for the uh, maintenance operations or the repairs. So, and so we we are able now to uh, have a delivery with this hold indicator on the inbound delivery. So, and then once the with the status of the hold indicator is changed to cross stocking based on the uh, field logistics functionality on the ERP side, and then we can then do the cross talking to the related outbound delivery in EWM. Yeah. So, and this is something which I think we should really be proud of. This is embedded EWM in true sense. So a goods receipt, uh, goods movement, for, uh, many customers use Migo for goods movement in the ERP world. And uh, they don't care whether it is uh, EWM managed storage location, non EWM managed storage location, or w LEAWM. So they use Migo and they're used to Migo. And with EWM so far, they were always getting an inbound delivery or they had to work with inbound and outbound delivery. So now we, we, have, uh, we have rounded up every possible goods movement postings in Migo so that it can be synchronized uh, with an embedded EWM, uh, which is, un so you don't need to work with deliveries anymore. No more queues, no more handling of hanging queues or uh, errors on the EWM side when everything has gone well on the IM side. So everything should now be in one LUW and it, the stocks would be in, in good sync on both sides after the posting is done. Next slide, please. So, so this is another industry specific. I don't know whether it's industry specific or region specific, especially in the North American uh, uh, continent. Uh, they use a different uh, unit of measure for weights, that's the pounds. And uh, if the material master has base unit of measure as kilograms and pound is the handling unit of measure, especially between trans stock transfers between Mexico and US or Canada and US, then they it results in a lot of differences, uh, small min mini differences, which we used to call decimal dust because EWM is capable to handle up to 14 decimal digits, whereas on the ERP side, it's only three decimal digits. And this, uh, this um, I think, minute difference accumulated over a period of time and then was resulting in a lot of operational inconveniences like there is not enough stock for booking on EWM side or on the ERP side. So we had uh, customers were complaining of uh, high operational costs with hanging queues and management of these differences. So we have now worked with uh, uh, such customers to find out the root cause of these uh, uh, we call it resi rounding residuals as, as a result of inconsistent, in, uh, I would say, uneven rounding. It, it can also be a carton with six pieces and you receive uh, one piece, but the base unit of measure is a carton, so it's one sixth of a carton. That also is a uh, leave some rounding residuals. So we, we have now uh, incorporated a concept for automatic adjustments of uh, rounding residuals up to. 0.001. So when it reaches a threshold of 0.001, then it is then automatically sent and adjusted to ERP. There is a rule for also absorbing uh, minor. So if you have something like a quantity of 0.0001 or lesser in a storage bin, it actually cannot be picked because you cannot pick anything which is less than 0.001. So we have a uh, we have now the capability to do an automatic cleanup of such my, uh, bins with minimal or decimal dust quantities. And we have incorporated also a monitor. And all these is also working with, together with the ERP stock check perfectly now. So uh, a whole lot of uh, enhancements we, we delivered with this release, starting with uh, screen persona. So, until now, if you wanted to have uh, a customized look and feel of your uh, RFUI, then you had to have uh, your own style sheet 
on the ITS mobile, uh, wherein you can you could change the layout, but you always had to adjust um, the style sheet accordingly as as and when the backend um, UI or transaction you you made changes. So, but here with this uh, we eliminated the use of uh, ITS mobile, so you can directly call use the web web GUI with the, with uh, uh, with something what we delivered as SAP Mob GUI. So mobile web GUI. And with this, we also now can use the screen personas to change the look and feel of the RF uh, transactions. You can have larger push buttons, bolder text, and so on. So different colors. And there's a how-to guide, which is which we deliver in the standard uh, the, the thing. And you can also adapt it with this. Then as part of this, we customers were always uh, asking, how can I know what are all the other screens which are on an RF screen, RF UI screen? So we have now enabled the RF design mode, which you can start with control shift F2 keys a combination. And then you can get all the, all the uh, fields which are displayed, which are actually on the screen, even though they are hidden in the, uh, uh, in the actual pr presentation profile of that transaction. So, and this is in runtime, so you don't have to go to a different uh, se session to see different uh, information, what, what other information is available on the screen. Then we had some, uh, a customer who used, uh, um, uh, who, who who was dependent on the sound support so so and uh, so the, because with every pick it was giving uh, information whether it was the right pick or the wrong pick and this was requested that it should work with uh, the, the new uh, RM, mob GUI also and the, the new devices so this is also now supported now with this release For especially especially for the e-commerce industry was to have the invoice printed or the delivery printed before the goods issue was posted or booked. So and now we have a status uh, uh, which we set uh, uh, on the delivery on the EWM side via the monitor, which is called ready for shipping. With this status setting, it will send an update on to the LE delivery where you can trigger. Uh, any outputs, including printing of uh, the delivery note or the uh, trigger the invoice creation. And this, uh, this setting also uh, will send the latest pick quantities and the package quantities from the EWM side to the LE side. Another demand from customers was how, sh how should I delete uh, deliveries in EWM? And rather than just have a reject button, so now we have incorporated uh, on the Fiori UIs for outbound and inbound uh, uh, Fiori's, uh, where we have a new button to delete an inbound delivery or delete an outbound delivery order. You can also select multiple orders, uh, multiple documents and delete them. So that's mass, mass enabled. Like you know, every customer has some additional fields on the product master, so and they would like to display it or have it also uh, uh, the feature to have this also on the warehouse product. So now we can define uh, on the Fiori app uh, for warehouse product. You can, uh, the, the, as a key user, you can uh, display any additional custom fields uh, which are extended into the warehouse product master so the scwm mat uh, one so what what you had now is also possible on the theory uh, app for warehouse product um lastly about the migration so so far it was possible to migrate a 9.5 system to a decentral s4 hana system and there were many good reasons why uh, 
a decentral 9.5 system could be potentially an embedded uh, EWM implementation in the NS4 HANA world because it might be the scope of the warehouse is um, small or the complexity is not so high and it fits uh, perfectly for an as an embedded warehouse in the new S4 HANA landscape. So now we we delivered uh, an extension to the migration guide so that you can also deploy send change the target system to an embedded EWM system on S4 HANA. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ama. <clears throat> so I will pick up uh, the innovation topics by now. So here we talk about a real core logistics functionality. So we call it warehouse zones or advanced interleaving. What is it about? Uh, we really would like to reduce the travel distance within the warehouse. So you could think of per, um, yeah, calculating each and every possibility between different uh, source and target bins, but that would take up way too much time. So the, the goal was that within a uh, limited period of time, so let's say below 500 milliseconds, so that the user don't actually notice it, we would like to give a good proposal what's the next best, next closest warehouse order to be executed. So by finishing off the warehouse or the first warehouse order, we basically look into a persistent table where we persist all the different travel distances between warehouse zones. So it's a master data you can define freely. So you can play around how you would like to set it up. So you can have, let's say, the whole upper part as one warehouse zone, the whole lower part as a warehouse zone, but you could even do it half rack or full rack and define a reference bin. By that, we then persist based on the resource type the travel distance because with certain resources you not, might not be capable to go directly you need to go around the, the different rackings and therefore you have a di different di travel distance and with this persistency we really get um, get a good result so we don't do it in an ivory tower somehow we did it as a proof of concept together with one of our big customer. And we really get some very beneficial feedback and we really were capable to improve certain picking, yeah, picking processes by up to 10% less travel distance in the warehouse. It really depends, I mean, on your specific setup, but we really get very good results here. A huge, um, topic is the so-called SAP Warehouse Robotics. SAP Warehouse Robotics is an own product built on the business technology platform from SAP. It's belonging to our warehousing solutions. We build it as well in a proof of concept together uh, in a prototype together with our partner Bechtle or our customer Bechtle. And we utilize here the so-called Mir robots. And the whole idea is basically we, we see um, a huge demand of labor, which we cannot fulfill globally. And uh, to enable your business to further grow, you need somehow a substitution, right? It's not that we, we would not like to utilize people workers. So, but uh, in fact, you don't get any people workers somehow on the floor to run your warehouse operations. So therefore we have to think about alternatives here. And most of the customers start with simple processes like replenishment during night shifts and stuff like that to just uh, utilize the, the workers for the in the best best manner for picking processes where it might be cumbersome for robots to, to do that. But to relieve the, the people from this, let's say, easy to do jobs like replenishment tasks. And there's a huge variety these days growing of these autonomous mobile robots. So we had been at first, there were more than 270 automated uh, mobile robot vendors. Um, the prices for leader sensors are dropping. So there's more and more of these hardware vendors appearing. So the overall idea is to have a vendor agnostic platform here available. We support in the first release simple processes like um, put away or let's say bin to bin movements of pallets. We are working on that. We have a roadmap for that. So we would like to even in the future be capable to connect to fleet management systems to enable picking scenarios. Um, so we really work on that. And the good message for everybody, even if you are not yet on the latest release, you can participate on this innovation already with your EWM 9.5 uh, release on the NetWeaver stack because <clears throat> it's an own platform. Why? We even think about connecting to DMC systems, so to, to our manufacturing execution system. And uh, 
because it's this own platform, we have the capability to even connect to all the EWM systems. So there's an OSS node available, how you could even connect your um, EWM 9.5 system to that warehouse robotic solution. Yeah, openness of the solution is a big topic, um, especially if we talk about the public cloud, there it is a must have. We need to have side-by-side -side extensibility capabilities. So we already created a lot of APIs, even for mobile devices, for example, even for other purposes where um, yeah, a certain custom specific process might not yet be supported in a sufficient way. You have the capability to even do side-by-side -side extensibilities. There was always, the possibility to enable these APIs, not only for the public cloud, so even in the on-premise installations, you could use them. The good message is by 2022 release now, um, we basically released all these APIs um, for on-premise systems as well, despite, and you will see that on the next slide, the handling unit one, because here were really differences between the public cloud offering and the on-premise offering. And that was the reason why back in the days we said you had to enable it via this OSS node and for the handling unit still there are differences. That's why um, this not yet get published um, for on-premise, um, but we are even working on that in the future. You see here the 2020, to a 2008 release as well. Why? Because we first implemented that for the public cloud. And uh, this is this guidance of public cloud first or cloud first approach. And then we take it over into our main release 2022 for the on-prem world. <clears throat> yeah, usability, a huge topic. We even created a new app called Manage Physical Stock. Um, and it sounds pretty simple, but in fact, it is not only a new UI. We even created the corresponding CDS views in the background. By that, we even achieved um, performance improvements and we already enabled first actions like the scrapping and the consumption. So the idea is to substitute the HTI transaction in the, in the near future. We did other round offs for already existing Fiori applications like the warehouse task processing. So we enabled serial number capturing. Um, we can now create pick handling units. You can create your own exception codes. And as mentioned by AMA, we even enabled the GTL number support here. The same for the outbound delivery, even here, you can now have the GTL HU number support. And we added two additional fields like the source bin and the HU field. Um, which was requested multiple times by our customers. <clears throat> yeah, smaller round of not a big topic, but requested by many even consultants. They said, oh, it would be nice to get in the monitor the simple functionality to post a goods receipt or to post a goods issue. Um, this we enabled in the warehouse monitor as well. Yeah. Finally, we made it through, let's say, our latest developments with 2022. And I would like to give you a little bit an outlook on what we have on the roadmap. So you have heard for 2022 that we delivered the warehouse zones, the stock segmentation, the manufacturing related topic around VIP handling, dynamic staging, the ASR is still a long journey. You saw it, we started already 2022, uh, 2020 with the feature pack one. Um, we have our warehouse robotics delivered in May and now even delivered out of the box the integration with 2022 release. We have the prepackaged shipping from production and the wave optimization. What we aim for in the future is machine learning for slotting. So the capability <clears throat> to not do a slotting based on different attributes. So a machine learning algorithm should learn from the past decisions uh, a user has made to basically <clears throat> propose a very good place in the warehouse to store the goods. Area and lane management, I think it's an interesting topic for everybody who has um, more than five doors, right? How to organize this uh, uh, staging and receiving base behind the door. You ha usually have multiple lanes there. And uh, yeah, there's different approaches for either the picking so that you find the most closest um, <clears throat> staging area or during receiving that you utilize a door with staging lanes which are free in a certain area. So for example, in the cold area or ambient area belonging to the stocks which are loaded on an inbound truck, for example. 
Advanced shipping and receiving, as mentioned, there's coming a lot more functionalities. We even think of delivery-based uh, pre-planning before warehouse execution. Um, there's other features where we work or need to work on, like the cross-handling units and so on. And the biggest junction is here, the enabling of ASR in a decentral setup. As mentioned for the warehouse robotics, we work on more use cases. We would like to onboard more hardware vendors I, I missed to mention that we already have official partnerships with um, Geek Plus, Locos, Fetch Robotics, and High Robotics. So we're even constantly working here um, on onboarding new partners to our solution. In terms of feature priority, we would like to deliver the batch specific unit of measure capability. Um, as mentioned, I think with the next release, we are heavily aiming on closing the gap between functionalities are available in the embedded and decentralized deployment option. I think we got challenged and questioned by many different customers, like said, oh, you always mention it's kind of uh, feature priority, uh, independent if you deploy it, um, embedded or decentralized. But the reality uh, was that this gap was getting closer, especially when we look into all these production related topics, like the repetitive manufacturing, like the Kanban integration, and this gap we try to close with the 2023 release. For even the long-term planning, we think about uh, digging into the wave list picking capabilities, especially in the retail area. That's a huge topic. So you would not like to organize any longer in big junctions to optimize the picking within the pro in, in the warehouse. So <clears throat> when we talk about parcel shipments, then there's even no might not be a need to have, let's say, a full truckload picked uh, together. You, so you constantly get new orders in in e-commerce scenarios and you start picking more or less directly after you get the order in to get as quick um, throughput times as possible. So these are certain things we work in the near future on it. So stay tuned. I think there's a huge number of new functionalities uh, already provided and there's even more to come in the future. By that, here's a, a bunch of different, uh, or a summary of different links where you can find additional information. And I would like to thank you all for participating in today's call and I think we do have some questions, right? Thank you very much, Florian. So over to the questions now. Uh, so Mrunal wants to know that how we can test robotic solution. Is there any test environment available? Actually, it's a it's a cloud solution. So you have a kind of subscription. So even for trying it out um, for our customers, there is a possibility by just uh, yeah signing off for bunch of months uh, to directly try it out, but there's no real test environment available. I mean, it is anyhow uh, related to some hardware. Yeah, you need somehow a, a mobile robot. So therefore, um, I think you really need to dig into what kind of robot you would like to purchase and then, um, yeah, try to set it up in your actual run, uh, running environment. Okay, and then uh, uh... I hope the, the features that you have uh, just explained, are they available both in embedded and decentralized? Any specific area where which only works in embedded and not works in uh, with the decentralized one? I cannot uh, by default say it's working in an embedded and decentralized everything which I have mentioned. I try to indicate uh, most of the time uh, when a functionality is only available in embedded, for example, the. Um, the target PSA functionality, which I, what I explained to you, is only available in embedded um, because it's working with the synchronous goods movements, um, as well as, for example, this package-based shipping from production is also only working in embedded. Um, so it's not by default that all the different features are available in embedded and decentral, but I try to mention, let's say, during the explanation, which functionality um, is available only in embedded for now. Thank you. And then uh, it's support the customer stock with project stock. Is it supported here? Uh, that was basically two, two different topics. One is the customer stock. And that's the, basically the other one is the project stock. So it support both or uh, is it support only the, the customer's stock at the moment? 
what we developed was the was the customer stock and the project stock should already work. I, I just got the kind of similar question because it somehow in the documentation is a little bit, uh, even in the release information note, it's a little bit vague described, but uh, the product uh, project stock should already work. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so it says, uh, is SAP Robotics will come with the, the EWM embedded at enhance, the advanced license or it will be a separate license altogether? Uh, the, uh, the, the warehouse robotics as such is an own product built on the business technology platform. So you need to basically uh, get a separate contract in place for the warehouse robotics as such. But for the backend implementation, that's not requiring any additional license or something like that. And the another question is that is WIP available also even without MES system? Yes, exactly. That what I, that's what I meant. Um, I mean, we don't have any internal functionality cr to create this VIP uh, stock, right? But we have an open API. And even if you don't have an MES system, you could even create your own ABAP program, call these APIs internally and create your VIP uh, stock via that capabilities. That's possible. And uh, are there any additional features like CDS views for KPIs available? Uh, no additional ones in this release. We aim for new um, SAC content in the feature pack one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another interesting question is that will Warehouse Robotics uh, substitute or uh, replace MFS? <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question because it's not really, and it, that, this is really, hard to distinguish most of the time. I always try to explain the difference mainly. I mean, when we talk a bit about material flow systems, then we talk about, let's say these huge investments, we have racks and rails and, and a very static area in which this uh, automa automated highways, for example, can operate. And therefore we have the material flow system connection usually. But if we talk about these AMRs, they are um, co-working robots usually. So they are driving in a normal way. And as mentioned by the name, they autonomously find their way. So you just have to bring the orders towards the robots and the robot finds his way on, on its own. It's about technology. I mean, the MFS one, the classically MFS one is working via TCP IP telegrams <clears throat> and the warehouse robotics usually working via these o o data APIs and via um, different protocols. So most of the time it's other protocols than the classical TCP IP protocol, which gets utilized here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, what is the, you know, in the ASR, we, we have, uh, you know, we have a TU, without TU approach. So when to use what, and then in, in which scenario we have to use ASR, and then which scenario we have to use the TU-based approach? Uh, we cannot say that by default, um, but let's say our strategic direction is for sure to go with the ASR integration in future. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so it, it has to be without the TU. Yes, in future we aim for the strategic directions to go with the freight order instead of the TU. The freight order is basically substituting the TU. Getting a lot of questions related to the Veros robotics. So is there any emulator also available to test? So, sorry, again? So any, any simulator or any emulators available for testing? No, there's uh, no official simulator available for that. This usually you get from your robot vendor then. Okay, 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 fair enough. All right, so any, I think most of the questions have been answered. So anything specific you wanna add, you know, which you might have not covered, so you can. Otherwise, we are going to close. No, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Florian. Thank you, Amar. And uh, thank you for your time. And then I would, uh, uh, you know, like you to send me across this presentation so that I can forward it to the, the participants and then uh, people who have not joined. And thank you very much. I will continue to follow up with you on the latest release. And then uh, we'll continue to have more community sessions like these in future. Thank you. Thank Bye you for bye. thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.